folks, we're inside of the combustion chamber on the 576, working our way about halfway through a big work blitz to install the tubes and flues into the locomotive. Behind me is our rear flue sheet that is brand new manufactured, and you can see we're about halfway full of tubes and flues. Now there's a remarkable amount of work and labor that goes into installing a tube or a flue, and we'll walk through that with you here now. plenty of room for both seal welding on the inside here or beading on the front side. The flues and tubes are then cut with a chop saw and the ends are polished to make sure that there's no contamination or foreign objects to interfere with the seal fit between the flue and the rear flue sheet or front flue sheet here. We've gone through and polished out each one of our holes and broken a radius on the inside to make sure that the flue is not cut by the sharp edge of the sheet to ensure the longevity and, and prevent future defects or cracks. After that, our flue is then inserted into its respective hole, whichever hole it was that we measured and cut that specific length for, through a grid pattern here so we can keep track of them. Our flue is then going to be set to the proper length, front and back, clamped into place, and we will begin the rolling process on the rear side or the combustion chamber side and finish the rolling process on the front or the smoke box side. Here is our flue roller. You can see it's got about a three inch diameter on this outside here. And these rollers interact on the inside with a center pin that's tapered. As this tapered pin is rotated by means of an air motor, electric drill, or otherwise, any you know, rotating appliance, that actually pushes the rollers out, expands them. And since it's moving in a circular pattern, it basically stretches the flue or the tube out to fully fill and seal tight against the front or rear flue sheet. The actual function of the tubes and flues is to carry the hot exhaust gases and smoke, and most importantly, heat from the fire up into the smokestack. On the other side of the flue, in this area here behind this sheet, it's all surrounded by water. The heat transfer that's taking place inside of the tubes and flues is the second step of the process for making steam that can be turned into work to move trains down the railroad. Every part of this incredibly complex and labor-intensive process was made possible and is thanks to all of you at home, all of you that served and worked with us in the shop, and everybody in between. The tubes and flues, the thermic siphons, some washout sleeves, and the remainder of the boiler studs are really the only large pieces that remain before we are able to complete a hydrostatic test on the boiler. With the tubes and flues being the largest part of that equation, we are that much closer. We are actually tremendously closer to being able to complete our hydrostatic test. This work that we're doing here is really driving us to the home stretch for a hydrostatic test, a steam test, and then eventually test runs and operations. We are really making some tremendous progress here in the shop. Make sure you follow along because we're excited to share more news like this in the next coming months. You can also learn more about our project, find out where to donate, and also find out how to volunteer and join our team at nationalsteam.org.